So Patrician TV just put out their most recent video, which is a quote-unquote quick review of Starfield. And I highly recommend it. Uh, I, in fact, I recommend their channel in general. They've put out a lot of really great long-form analysis videos about Bethesda's catalog of games. But as of the time of this recording, I literally could not have finished that video. But there's a reason why I decided to stop and make this video now. And that's because right at the beginning of that video, he talks about something or rather, he reveals something about Bethesda's development strategy that is so mind-bogglingly, just astonishingly stupid that I just had to stop and double-check it for myself to make sure that it's true and then sit down to record this video. Now, to be fair, the information that Patrician TV revealed to me is not exactly new information. As far as I can tell, the source of this key bit of info comes from a sort of game design lecture that Emil, one of the lead designers of basically all of Bethesda's recent games, uh, he gave this talk all the way back in 2016. So, this information's been out there for a while, however, the actual video in question on the talk only has around 75,000 views despite all of these years going by. So I don't know if there's many people that actually are aware of this lecture or the frankly insane things that were said during it. So I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description to the video that I'm talking about, both Emil's talk and Patrician TV's review of Starfield because everything that I've seen so far of it is pretty great. So you should all check that out as well. Now, what exactly is this mind-blowing revelation that made me want to make this video? It is the fact that according to Emil, one of the highest higher-ups at Bethesda, that they don't use a design document when making their games. Or at the very least, they, they might have a game design document, but it is usually woefully outdated and and nowhere near complete because they prefer to, you know, have de the designers play the game themselves and so on and so forth instead of recording it in documentation. Great games are played, not made, means that we use the iterative process. We make the game. We are very flexible with changing things. We are actually at a state now um, in, in the development of the studio, we don't have a lot of extensive design documentation. We found that probably after we hit Fallout 3, the design docs that we had became outdated very quickly because we knew we needed to get stuff in the game and play it and then change it. We needed to iterate on it. So we would have these extensive 50-page design documents that were completely outdated, and the time it took to maintain those just wasn't worth it. Now... I don't know how many of you have worked on a video game before. I myself am by no means a big time developer, but I have worked on at least a few small time projects. And even when I was only working on a team that had a grand total of 14 people, and the project that we were making only was going to take at most a few months to complete, we still made sure to have a living game design document to record basically every major feature of the game and go over all of the game's basic gameplay loops, you know, what the player's meant to be doing, how people are going to be approaching different situations, key aspects of the level design, like, so many things go into making a game that you need a place to keep track of it all. And a game design document is not merely something that you write up at the beginning of the process. Like, I feel like some people might think that, you know, you might have some kind of genius alter, like, you know, Hideo Kojima or something, just sit down one day and write up, you know, a 400 page long game design document, and then he just sends it out and then the game gets made based on that document. No, that's not how that works. The game design document is a living document, which means that you start out with something, obviously, but 
over time, you add to it. You, you make changes. You find out things may or may not work, and so you try out different things. But you always consult the document first, and the document is an extremely important tool in the game designer's arsenal because it makes it easier to manage larger teams because they can just reference the document if they have a question. Like, ideally, if a game designer or a programmer or an artist or anybody has a question about where the game's like design or direction or whatever is meant to be going, you know, you can't just be going to the team heads 100% of the time every time you have a question. You can't like boot up the game to try something out every time you want to try something new. No, like the point of the game design document is to basically provide all of the answers to any question that anybody could possibly have during any part of the game design process. It's, it's meant to be a total conglomeration of all of the game's core ideas in one place. And if there's ever a question that is not answered in the document, then you go to, you know, a team lead or the lead director or whatever, and you ask them, and then once you get that answer, you add it to the document so that if anybody else ever has that question again, you have the document to reference for what that design is meant to be. It, it is so integral to making a game come together that the idea that a Bethesda would be making games as insanely large in scope as they are, with hundreds of people on their teams across different countries in the world, and they don't have a living central game design document for them all to reference? It, that's... It's insane! <laughs> like, even when I am throwing together just a minor prototype, something that I don't even imagine will ever see the light of day, but I just got a random whim for a cool idea that I wanted to try building out in Unity or Unreal, usually the first thing I do, no matter what, is write down the details of that idea in a new document. Now, sure, it's by no means a fully fledged game design document, but you know, every document starts somewhere. And by writing down those ideas, not only do I ensure that I won't just randomly forget them, but it can provide focus as well as a direct means to help expand on those ideas. Sometimes just the process of writing down an idea forces you to think about it more and flesh it out. Like, you start out with a small idea for a platformer, and then as you're writing it down, you go, oh, well, what kind of enemies do, do I need to put in the game in order to provide the player with obstacles? What, what kind of obstacles in general do I need to add in order to challenge the player just in general? You know, what kind of levels do I want to have? What kind of level gimmicks do I think should be added? How should those be distributed? And like, this can all stem from a basic idea just being written down on a piece of paper until it fleshes out into an entire game process. Now, you still might be thinking, you know, what, what's the big deal? You know, okay, sure, Bethesda doesn't use this very common technique for helping organize their production schedule and everything for their games. Like, how can we really say that this has that big of an effect on their games? Well, I think that viewing Bethesda's game design through the lens that they don't have a central major living game design document is really eye-opening and reveals why a lot of Bethesda's issues are the way that they are. Back in Patrician's video, he uses a really solid example that is a good microcosm of, you know, why this lack of a documentation can result in massive mechanics being implemented and then going completely to waste in the final game. The example he uses is Starfield's use of zero-gravity gunfighting. Like, the game has this entire system for navigating and fighting in zero-g. You, you can fly around a space with, you know, in all three dimensions without gravity or anything. You know, when you fire your gun, it provides recoil that pushes you backwards. 
even enemies and AI work in three dimensions, which like that couldn't have been easy to implement. I've worked on AI before and, you know, even in 2D, it was complicated. I can't even imagine how complicated it would be to program an AI to not only function in 3D space, but also like learn how to find cover and shoot at the player, like all this other stuff, even with how simple it is in most Bethesda games. So like that's an entire complicated system for zero gravity gunfights that exist in the game that barely goes utilized. Like I ran into one encounter early on in my playthrough where there was a ship where the gravity was constantly turning off and on and so it would actually go back and forth between normal grounded gunfighting with enemies and a zero g gunfight with it switching back and forth like every 30 seconds or so and that was a cool encounter but the fact that this system barely ever gets utilized across this entire massive game just goes to show you what this lack of organization can result in like if they had documented everything more thoroughly and properly, then either more designers could have been made aware of this mechanic and been able to implement it into their level design and, you know, use it throughout more of the game, or alternatively, the, le the team leads could have realized before the mechanic was even implemented that the design was not going to be used in much of the game at all and could have just cut the feature entirely, saving potentially countless hours of dev time that functionally went to waste for the final product. And, and that's just one example, and I think that you can really apply this kind of reasoning to a lot of the problems in Bethesda's games. Another one, just from Starfield alone, is basically everything that has to do with starships in the game. Like, they have this entire system for building a spaceship where you have to, you know, choose the layout of the rooms and add various components like storage capacity and engines and FTL drives and cockpits and all this fun stuff. And then they don't have a system for designing the interior of your ship or even knowing what's in the interior of your ship. Because presumably the people that were designing the shipbuilding system are not necessarily the same people that are designing things like the house system or uh, the furniture systems for like outposts and whatnot. And so they probably would have assumed that that was being taken care of by someone else. And, you know, there was no need to incorporate it directly into the Starship building system. And then as a result, that feature just gets completely dropped. And now we have this strange final product where you can build a Starship from scratch, but it's almost impossible to know what it'll actually look like on the inside when you're done, unless you feel like wasting a ton of credits, constantly completing the project, going in to check it out, then realizing that it's not the way you wanted, and then having to rebuild it again and again just to try and make it look better. Like, it, it's so... Oh my god. And I mean, we, we can take it further. Like, the fact that starships in general are just heavily underutilized in the space game. Like, they, they presumably wanted to have, you know, this whole starship flying system and, you know, this combat system and the building system and everything. All this stuff to do with spaceships that, like, it's this really big, complicated part of the game that probably had a ton of dev time and man hours and effort just put into it. And yet, we're talking about a game where you're barely ever incentivized to actually spend any real time on your ship since all space travel is done through menus and warping to other star systems through loading screens like you don't actually spend any real time on your ship beyond just going to your cockpit and picking a destination and then calling it a day the, the only time you actually do something is when you get into a fight but even then the inside of your ship doesn't really matter because you always have to be in your cockpit piloting and then that's kind of it and even then, you can kind of ignore ship combat since you can just leave the combat at any time by warping away. So, as a result, you have this entire massive complicated part of your game that feels like it should have been almost the main focus of your game, and yet you're barely ever incentivized to really interact with it in any meaningful capacity. And this and this these sets of problems extend far beyond just Starfield. Like Fallout 4 is I think another great example of 
the problems that not having the central document can result in. Like, a huge part of Fallout 4 is their settlement building system, much in the same vein as, you know, Starfield's own outpost building and starship building systems. Fallout 4, you can build all these settlements, and, you know, it's this huge part of the game. Like, hell, I'm pretty sure I spent more of my time playing Fallout 4 building settlements, setting up trade routes, you know, building buildings and assigning NPCs to shops and all this other fun stuff and yet it has nothing to do with basically the rest of the game like what I mean is that you would think that a system like that that clearly took up a huge proportion of the game's development in order to implement and also takes up a huge amount of time that a lot of players are going to be spending in that game you, you would think that something like that would be a bigger focus of the game's overall narrative and themes and, you know, other factions and characters and everything. Like, instead of it just being, you know, mostly relegated to a single faction that barely has any real interactions with any of the other factions. Like, Fallout as a whole, like, conceptually, at its core is a game about the post-apocalypse. The, the game's core thesis is what happens after the bombs drop. And it's mostly, like most post-apocalyptic stories, about people and what those people do and how they try to form connections in this new world without, you know, society. And usually you get to the point where they have to rebuild at least some sense of community and then they have to make decisions about like, oh, do we try to avoid the mistakes of the old world or do we try to learn and improve upon what they did or maybe we forgo everything and so on and so forth. You get the idea. So if you were to have a post-apocalyptic game where building settlements is a huge part of that game, you would think that the narrative and everything else about the game would focus on that settlement building, that it would be about rebuilding society. I mean, hell, Fallout 4 takes place like 200 years after the apocalypse. You'd think society would have been rebuilt already by that point. So the idea is like, why would you have this entire system and just have the story be something completely different? And I feel like this is another example of the exact kind of problems that arise when you don't have a centralized game design document to refer to. Like, this this feels like the kind of thing that was started implementing because it was a popular mod for Fallout New Vegas and stuff like that. And they were like, oh, people like doing this. You know, we could probably build a whole system for this. And then it probably just kept ballooning out in scope and scale because, you know, an entire building system is kind of a big deal. And yet it has nothing to do with the rest of the development of the game because there was never any real focus or, you know, direction to keep things consolidated in one place. So you ended up basically probably having entire teams of people that basically were doing nothing but building out the settlement system and not interacting at all with essentially any of the game's other major systems or narratives or anything and other narratives and quest designs could barely interact with the settlement system with the exception of like that one story mission where you build a teleporter and like it's because they couldn't rely on a consistent document to use as reference to know what the game was going to be like anyways i think you get the idea by now Good documentation, whether you're talking about the game design document or things like technical documents to help with formatting code or art style guides to make sure that all the artists are on the same page and everything in the game looks consistent, it's all incredibly important for managing a game's production, especially when you get to the point of making larger and larger games to, to the scale that Bethesda is doing. Like, it's still mind-boggling to me that a triple-a studio that puts hundreds of millions of dollars and years of development into their flagship titles would not be using this basic game design 101 strategy to develop their games in an effective manner 
And it's also particularly telling to me that the excuse that this guy brings up during his talk that of why they don't bother with game design documents is that it allegedly wastes too much time. The design docs that we had became outdated very quickly because we knew we needed to get stuff in the game and play it and then change it. We needed to iterate on it. So we would have these extensive 50 page design documents that were completely outdated and the time it took to maintain those just wasn't worth it. I can guarantee just based off of personal experience alone that good documentation can save so much wasted time. Anytime anybody needs to ask a question, you refer to the documentation. And if the documentation is good, then they don't need to bother anyone else, which removes their time from the project because they have to help this other person, and then so on and so forth, and it keeps going up the chain. And like, I could imagine a game on the scale of the likes of Starfield could be wasting literally months of development due to bad documentation like this. I mean, like I said, entire features like the zero gravity shooting effectively going to waste because they are barely implemented in the final game means that all of the time and effort that it took to develop all of those systems for like recoil and enemy AI and everything for that situation are basically going to waste. And like I said, that could easily be months and months of effort. Like, the only potential justification for why he thinks it wastes too much time is because, well, if you think about it, who's the one that's responsible for keeping documentation up to date? I'll give you a hint. It's the team leads like him. It's his job. So, the only person whose time it's wasting is his. Like, it's not a matter of trying to save development hours because you don't want to bother with documentation. It's about him not wanting to put in the work so that his team doesn't waste thousands of development hours because of his bad documentation. So yeah, I, th I think I'll go ahead and just wrap this up here. Like I said, there is a link to Patrician TV's original video that inspired this one in the description below. Highly recommend his channel. And there is a link also to the full lecture that Emil gave that I pulled a lot of these clips from in the description as well. And honestly, despite the fact that it has a massively negative ratio on YouTube, I highly recommend watching the whole thing if you're at all interested in game design or writing for games, because my god is it eye-opening to just how many bad practices are currently in Bethesda that I'm pretty sure have not changed since this video came out. Like, honestly, I feel like if this video wasn't, like, as obscure as it is, Bethesda would probably try to get it taken down because of how bad it makes them look. I mean, literally, like, every single comment in the video is basically just completely making fun of the guy for just how terrible this whole lecture is. Like, it's fascinating to watch. But yeah, anyways, as usual, I'm always happy to continue the conversation down in the comments below. Feel free to let me know if, you know, you agree with what I'm saying about the game design document and how important it is. I'm also curious to see if anybody watching this video is an actual fellow game dev who has worked on a larger project that would love to chime in on just how important documentation is, especially as projects get bigger and bigger. Because I can only imagine, like I said, I've only, I've only worked on a team of at most 14 people when talking about games. So, you know, imagining working on a team with hundreds if not thousands of people and like the amount of documentation that must need to be maintained. Like, I'm really curious to see what they have to say. So like I said, leave a comment down below and if you like what you saw, make sure to leave a like. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, make sure to subscribe so that you can get notified of when they come out. And with that, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.